All right, so right now, when we are playing this, we only face right. This guy likes to walk backwards. He, he doesn't even like look like he's walking, but he, he, he just runs to the right. And then when he's running left, he just looks the same. So let's make this guy actually like look where he's going because it's unsafe being this way. So if we look over here, we go into this transform. Actually, we can do this right while the game's running. And we look over here, you see over here, this X scale is one. If we increase this, I just did it on the main camera instead of the player. We have the player selected and we increase this. What? Look at that. What? Oh, what happens when you go negative? That's right, guys. So you can actually like scale up like this. And if you go into negative one, you'll end up not negative 41. That's ridiculous. Negative one. Okay, I destroyed the game. <laughs> um, if you go to negative one, he'll actually be facing left. Right? To the. So now that we know exactly how it works inside of there, how do we set this up inside the game? I'm going to show you. We're going to do this inside of a script. Thought you got out of it, didn't you? So basically, while he's moving left, we want him to have a negative one for a scalp, right? So if no, he's already looking left. So we already know like while that A key is being pressed, it's happening. So we also want to scale that will happen. Now, what, what does that now? Every game object has a transform inside of it. That's that thing where I could set that uh, scale on there, right? So if I go transform, see how we already have access to it? Because we're inside that object, right? And you always have access to the transform dot now if i just type scale that might be a good idea and you can see here you can actually set it and get it right so you want to set the scale so you see it says local scale dot now over here though you'll see that like if we although you can set the local scale you would think that you would just want to take the x right and you want to say negative one right why doesn't it work? Well, because the X itself isn't something that you can set and get. It's just a field within local scale. So what you really want to do is you want to go local scale equals vector two. And then you want to hit negative one for that. And then for this, you want it to be set equal to whatever it's already equal to. We already know that it's one and it's going to stay one. We're never going to mess with how tall the character is, right? So we're going to do that. And you want to make sure it says new in front of this vector two because it is a new one. It's not just some random one. And there you go. So now that we've been able to set that up, you see that he falls, he moves right. But when he moves left, what happens to the screen? You go to your scene view, you see that he did turn left. It did work. But for some reason, the camera's just not working for us. What's going on and you look at the camera preview over there and for some reason it's just not working out so we're gonna actually have to make a better camera controller inside this video as well so we'll create a new script right camera controller have it pop and open we double click this bad boy and it opens up we're gonna make a public transform this is the thing that we're going to be following everything has a transform the capital t means the class instead remember the public lets us uh, access it from the engine itself it's this again it's not best practice we'll get into that later but for now just go with it we're gonna name this player and then on void update we're gonna say transform dot position now you see in here that it's on here it's a set and it's a get and a set it's a mean that you can set it right equals and you want to go player which is also a transform dot position right now again you don't have to completely understand this right now it's going to make more sense the more and more you do it but this right here is a very simple way to make it so that the positions match. Now positions only have the X, Y, and Z value of everything. So really this isn't exactly ideal because the Z, as you remember, is negative 10 on, on the camera. So we don't actually want the whole player position. We actually only want two of it. So we're going to say new vector three. And we're going to say player.position.x, player.position.y. And then we're going to say transform.position.z so that we stay the same on that. So here's what we're saying. We're saying that we have this position, so vector three, meaning that it has the X, Y, and Z value inside of it. All transform tassies. 
every component, uh, I mean, not component, but every instance has a transform inside of it, and every transform has a position that x, y, and z value right here, right? And we're going to say this is going to be equivalent to a new one. We're going to build it out of the x value of the player, the y value of the player. We do this by saying player.position.x, player.position.y. So we say, it's a, okay, player, give me your position. What part of your position? The x. Okay, also give me the y. Okay, and then we're going to take our own z. So transform, my transform component, which is this thing right here. Give me your position, which is the x, y, z portion of this. You see it says position next to it. And give me the z portion of that. And you can see inside the vector 3, it says float, 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 meaning that you need to pass in three floats into it in order for it to work, right? So you see right here, it says player.position.x. This is, if we just did player.position, that's a vector 3. You can see it says vector 3 under here. You see over here under, with the x, we're actually passing in the float. So you, so when you're actually making this new vector 3, that's why you have to do that dot x at the end on top of, you know, being correct. It, it won't work if I just take this out. It, so anyways, we play this up. Oh, and we want to unparent the camera real quick, right? And most importantly, if you go in here, see that it says none right there. I'm going to drag this player over and it'll take his transform automatically. Even though we're passing in the whole instance and knows what to look for on him, it takes this thing's transform and sticks it right in there on the script. We save the scene. We save the scene. And we push play. And ta da! There you go. It works now. We're only turning left. When we go right, we're not turning because we never changed anything on that. But. At least it is working, and that is going. So let's fi let's finish this off with a challenge to you, my friends. If you go back into your player controller, if you do not have an open still, you can go over here, go on player, double click it on right here. Once you get it open, I want you to make it so that when he pushes the D key, he is in the positive direction on the X scale. Pause the video here and try it out. All right. So, you know that you want him to go in the positive direction here, right? So you go transform, right? Dot local scale. And if you can't remember it, just remember you're messing with the scale. So you start talking, typing in scale, and luckily uh, Visual Studio 2 is a lot, has a lot better memory than we do. You can double click it if you want, or you can just type it out however you want to do it. You know that you can get or set it because you saw that when we were clicking there. You go new vector two. That's what this is. So we have to make one, right? We want it to be in the positive direction because we're going right. And we know we want it to be the right size, which is one, the actual size, 100%. And then we know that we want our Y to stay the same at one as well, right? So now that we did that, he'll face right. So left, right. Jump, jump, jump. Ta da! And just like that, we have built a left and right movement. Again, I want to say this just in case you are a better coder than, well, you coded before, because I'm basically building this from the ground up and we're just reiterating and reiterating and reiterating so that they can start to sink in and comfort levels can build slowly. But, uh, we are doing a lot of things against coding practices right now, uh, and we will slowly introduce those things, but until you can walk, we're not going to try running, you know? So, anyways, let me know what you think down below. Uh, give me some feedback. Let me know what you would like to see next inside of a next tutorial series. And uh, if you think that something can be changed inside my teaching style, that would be uh, great feedback as well. Thank you very much, and you have yourselves a great day. I will see you next time. Bye!